praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless and praise his holy name. We thank God and welcome each and every one of you. This is the Generation Live Broadcast. I know that God is up to something wonderful. We're going to have a great time in him together today. Let's go worship him right now. generation, this is First Lady Latracia Fryson. Our vision statement, to have a credible ministry, motivated by compassion, and dynamic through conviction. Our mission statement, the Generation of Praise Christian Church is a Bible-centered ministry purposed to equip and empower the followers of Jesus Christ, preach and teach the gospel message, and provide individuals with holistic ministry to promote change for the better. God bless you. Good morning, Generation of Praise. Announcements for Sunday, August 30th, 2020. Generation Live Online Worship. Join Pastor Fryson next Sunday, September 6th at 10.15 a.m. at www.generationofpraise.org for our Generation Live Online Worship and Communion Service. Queen Esther Live Watch Party. Get your watch party pass with sight and sound and experience Queen Esther Live with your GOPCC family on September 4th at 7 p.m. Then join Pastor and First Lady for a Zoom discussion on September the 5th at 10 a.m. For more information, log on to www.generationofpraise.org. Connect with us. Generation Live Sunday online worship service is Sundays at 10 15 a.m. Zoom Sunday worship service is every second Sunday at 9 a.m. For more information regarding our church, ministry event announcements, and online giving opportunities, please log on to www.generationalpraise.org. Tell a friend to connect with us on Facebook, and we welcome you to follow us on Twitter. Our Year of Perfected Vision 2020. Good morning, Heavenly Father. We just love you and praise you and thank you for who you are and what you represent, Father God. We just lean on you, Lord, and we just thank you for all that we have, all that you continue to bless us with, Father. Our homes, we thank you for our jobs. We thank you for our friendships. We thank you for our family, Father God, and we thank you for keeping us all safe and protected through this time of need, Father God. Thank you for continuously to pay our bills, Father God, to help us to pay them on time. Lord, to keep food on our tables, Father God, and to even help others, Father God. Lord, you are an awesome God, and there is none like you, Lord Jesus. Bless those who need it, and bless those that don't think they do, Father God. Lord, let's pray for our unsaved loved ones, Lord. Let's pray for the loss. Let's pray for this country. Let's pray for the safety of each and every individual that's out out there trying to do their jobs to protect us. Bless our pastor, bless his family, bless our church family. Father God, because you are an awesome God and there is none like you and we love you and we praise you and we thank you for who you are. For this is our prayer in Jesus name we pray. Well, may God be praised forever. We thank God for this beautiful day that God has given us and we're certainly grateful uh, that we can connect and stay connected uh, in this season of isolation. But we're going to honor God and worship Him together right now through the worshipful act of giving. Let me first of all thank you so very much to our church and supporters of our ministry. Thank you for your faithfulness. I'm telling you, your generosity has been refreshing to us. It has literally been uh, just an encouragement and joy to us to see the faithfulness of God's people uh, in the support of the work of ministry as we continue to press on in the name of the Lord. 
So it's a very special thank you. I know the blessings of God are yours. Let me encourage uh, you, my friend, to continue to be faithful. Thank you for your generosity and your your just your heart of giving. Uh, you're making a difference as we reach the world for Christ and try to reach our community the best way we can. So listen, we give in our church in three key areas. We believe in the tithe, that the tithe is holy. So we honor the Lord with uh, a tithe offering. Uh, we know that we are not any under any legalism or uh, the old system, but we uh, the tithe, is, it does say, the Bible says, it is holy unto the Lord. And so we honor God in that 10% of our income we give to God. Also, we honor God with offerings. This is above and beyond our tithe. And this is as the Lord prospers you to be a blessing for you know you can't beat God's given no matter how hard you try. And then the third area we give uh, primarily in our church is in the area of our Vision 2020. It's coming along very, very well as we continue to build up for the vision that we are believing the Lord for uh, in the in the very near future for our new building and our new edifice. So in those three key areas, we thank God. There's some other opportunities as well, but you can give securely right now online at our website, www.generationofpraise.org. Or you can download our mobile app and you can give uh, through the mobile app uh, through the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. You can download those apps. Just search for Generation of Praise Christian Church and those and the app will be there for you. However you give, it's a blessing to us. and We thank God for you. I want to pray with you now that God may bless your finances. I want to believe God together that God is going to do it. Come on, let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the generosity in the hearts of your people. Now, God, I pray that you would bless uh, the people of God as they give in your honor. Lord, you said that if we give, it would be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, even running over, shall men put into our bosom. So we pray today, God, that as we give, we thank you for the harvest that's coming back in our lives. Keep our families safe, God. Bless us that we can continue to be a blessing. Every life, every gift, nothing is too big or too small. We love you for it and ask your blessings over it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, my friends. Let's go do that and worship the Lord in giving right now. Thank you again. God bless.
Well, blessings, everybody. We thank God again for this special opportunity to share in the love of Christ and the fellowship of the saints. Today, I'm very honored and blessed uh, to showcase and share with you um, a wonderful and precious gift that we have in the body of Christ. Um, she is my wife and she is the first lady of the Generation of Praise Christian Church. She's gonna bring forth a word now. Won't you receive her as she shares right now? Well, good morning, Generation of Praise Christian Church. This is your first lady, Elder Latracia Price, and coming this morning to share God's word with you. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our senior pastor, Pastor Leonard Price and Jr. for giving me an opportunity to come and share with you this morning. It's so good to have uh, so many of you join us on every Sunday. So let's just jump right into this word, amen. This morning, we're gonna look at Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. And the word says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. One more time. For you formed me in my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Isn't that a reason to give God glory? Lord God, I pray that this word, Lord God, is what you have called me to share with your people this morning. So as we get right in it, let us just thank you, Lord God, for creating us as who you made us to be. Brothers and sisters, I thank you so much for joining me this morning. We're going to talk about Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. But as we talk about it, won't you put your hand over your heart this morning and declare this with me? I am praiseworthy. Say it again. I am praiseworthy. That's right. When the psalm writer for 139 uh, began to talk about that this beautiful psalm talking about all these great attributes of the Lord and how he's so thankful that God would never leave him or forsake him. And no matter where he goes, God will always be there with him. Such a great declaration and promises to continue to fulfill. But one thing stuck out to me and always sat with me all my life, um, ever since I began looking at the scripture, is Psalm 139 and 13 and 14, where he says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When have you, or when was the last time you ever gave God thanks and praise for the person you see in the mirror? Sure, you might also uh, often thank God for, um, you know, uh, your, your, your roof over your head or food on the table. But when was the last time you actually praised God for you? When was the last time you praised him? Not because there was a good money in the bank or not because all your bills were paid or not because things in life were going well. When was the last time you looked in the mirror and said, I praise you, O Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Have you ever considered yourself as something praise worthy? When was the last time you actually considered yourself the person you look at every day in the mirror as something praise worthy. This isn't about being conceited. This isn't about being arrogant or puffed up. This isn't about vanity. This is what the word of the Lord declares in Psalm 139. In verse 14, he doesn't say, I praise you because my bills are paid. I praise you because all my friends like me. I praise you because my job is great. He says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My brothers and my sisters, I want to commend and remind you this morning that you are a work of art. You are a designer's original. You are handcrafted of the almighty himself. The, the psalm writer said, marvelous are your works. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew exactly what he was doing when he was making you. He didn't make any mistakes. He knew exactly how far apart he wanted your eyes 
eyes to be. He knew how wide or small he wanted your nose to be. He knew exactly how, how pinchable he wanted your cheeks to be. God made you in a marvelous work. I want to encourage us about this this morning because I think in this uh, this climate in which we're living in, there are so many things that are trying to tell us that we are less than. There are so many things that are trying to tell us that, our, that we don't matter and that we are not uh, who God says we are. So this morning, I wanted to encourage you that you are praiseworthy. As the Lord said to Jeremiah in chapter one, verse five, he says, before I formed you in the womb, I sanctified you before you were born. I, I, I wove you together in your mother's womb. He knew exactly who you were and who he created you to be. He didn't make any mistakes when he made you. He knew exactly how tall he wanted you to be, how short he wanted you to be. Amen. Come on. He knew exactly who he wanted you to be. God makes no mistakes when he forms us. He made no mistake when he decided in his grand wisdom and grand understanding that he wanted to have a Latracia in the world, a John in the world, a Mary, a Sue, or whomever your name might be. He said, I wanted to have this person in the world. He did not make a mistake when he made you. Why is this so important this morning for us to understand that we are praiseworthy? Why is it so important to understand that we are, in fact, a marvelous work? Well, my brothers and sisters, I believe that if many of us were to begin to look in the mirror and understand that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we would recognize that our neighbor is also fearfully and wonderfully made. We would recognize that the person pumping gas next to us is also fearfully and wonderfully made. That we would recognize our employers are still fearfully and wonderfully made. We would recognize that whether they are Democrat or Republican, they are still fearfully and wonderfully made. We have gotten so far removed and so caught up in so many circumstances and so many ebbs and flows in this human society. We have become so overwhelmed and so impacted by everything we see on the news, everything we hear on the media, everything we see in TV. And some of us have begun to subscribe to some of these negative thoughts and negative connotations about ourselves and about our neighbors. But we've got to remember that we are still a fearful and wonderful work. Why is that important this morning? Because if I see myself as a fearful and marvelous work, and I see you as a marvelous work, then maybe we can begin to start putting aside some of these things that are holding us captive. We can start putting aside uh, these opinions that are really earthbound. Some of them, yes, are very important. These things matter. These things are, are important things, but we have become so focused on minute issues that we're not paying attention to salvation. We're not paying attention to loving our neighbor. Jesus did not say that all men would know him because we had cars or because we subscribe to a certain political party. He says they will know you by the love you have for one another. But how can I love my neighbor when I'm not truly loving myself? That's right. I'm not talking about you being conceited. I'm not saying if you if you think you loving yourself so much, yeah, I'm all right loving myself. Well, we got to be careful with that. I'm talking about praising God for the marvelous work of you. When was the last time you looked in the mirror and declared, "I am"? praise worthy. So many things in this world that the enemy has done is to oppress us and to make us feel like we are not a marvelous work. Every now and again, he wants to discourage you. He wants to tell you that, you know, you a sinner and God, you know, why should God have to forgive you again? How many times are you going to ask for forgiveness? How many times are you going to do that? You know, you, you know, you're not really worthy of it. The other day we were sitting with our youngest son and we were watching one of his favorite cartoons and they were um they did an illustration 
of, of Job and they were showing how uh, the, the enemy came to, you know, ask God, you know, who can I come against? And God said, well, have you considered my servant Job? And the interesting thing is God sat there and bragged on Job, but the enemy was like, well, that's only because you're taking good care of Job. But the interesting thing is God already had recognized that Job was a marvelous work. He already recognized who he created. That means you and me, my friend, God already recognized you as a marvelous work. Can you recognize that in yourself? When was the last time you considered yourself a marvelous work? Do you realize that it's not based on uh, your, your, your credentials or your bank account or your health situation? God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. It's so interesting that we have to look at it. We got to go back to the beginning. When we start thinking about creation, you got to go back to Genesis. And when we look at Genesis 1, beginning at verse 28, he says, uh, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. The mere fact that God chose to create us in his own image and likeness is reason enough to rejoice. He didn't say, you know, let us just create man. I mean, and that would have been nice enough, whatever that creation would have looked like. But God said, let us create him in our image. God wanted to, in the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, that's who he's talking to. He said, let us create man in our image, one man included then the Bible goes on to declare, then after it says uh, uh, he, he made the fish over the, the, the sea, he made the birds in the air. But in verse 31 says, then God saw everything he had made and indeed it was very good, right? In his own image, in the image of God, he created them, what? Male and female, he created them. And verse 31 says, and then God saw everything that he made and indeed, it was very good. That's right. When he made you, when he made me, when he looked at that creation of humanity, he said it is very good. But when we turn on the news, we say it's not good. When we look at our social media accounts and see what's going on, we say it's not good. When we see what's happening in the world, sometimes the way our neighbors act, the people at the grocery store act, we say mm, it's not good. But God is still declaring the goodness of creation over humanity. Because what? He made us in his image. My brothers and my sisters, I want us to think about that right now. Think about the very thing that you're upset about right now. Think about the very thing that is, is bothering you, whether it's uh, the different protests and, and, the, and the reasons for the protests and, and the pandemic and people wearing masks, people not wearing masks. Think about all these different things. And at the end of the day and the beginning of it, God says it is very good. That's right. He's saying that the creation he made is good. It's the enemy that is driving us apart. It's the enemy that is setting us apart. And we've got to be the church. That's right. We've got to be the church. We can't wait for the world to begin to declare the mighty acts of God. We can't wait for the world to begin to say how good our neighbor is or how great it is to see. I'm not talking about their actions or their deeds. I'm talking about remembering that that person is still made and formed in the likeness of God. My goodness. If we were to stop and for put our, our, our differences aside, our political agendas aside, our, our, our cultural differences aside, if we were just to stop for a minute and remember that that person is really truly made in the likeness of God, then we would see a change in this world. I believe it is not too late for us to remember that I am praiseworthy, you are praiseworthy, and that the work that was done to create you is a marvelous work. How can we then declare Psalm 150 if we don't recognize that my brother, my sister, my neighbor is a marvelous work? That's why we've got to forgive people. My God, I know this has been a season I've had to forgive things I never thought I'd have to ever forgive. But guess what? I had to remember. Guess what? 
I have no authority over that person's life. I have no control over whether they want to vote this or vote that. I have no control over whether they want to wear a mask or not wear a mask. All I can know is that that person was made in the image of God. And it's just my responsibility to love like Jesus. That's all I have to do. I just have to honor the love that God put inside of me for my neighbor. Does that mean I have to agree with every act? No. But does that mean I have to treat them civilly? Yes. That means it doesn't matter whether I agree with everything they're doing, but do I have to treat them like Christ treat me? That's right, because they are just as praiseworthy as I am. And I know it's a hard pill to swallow in these tense times, but we've got to do it. We've got to be the church because he is coming back like our pastor taught us last week, but he is looking for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He is looking for his church to love like he loved, that even when he was on the cross, he still died for us when he was on the cross he forgave those who really did trespass when he was on the cross he allowed uh, John to behold his mother and his mother to behold John when he was on the cross he did that because he believed that his creation was praiseworthy we ought to do like the psalm writer said in 150, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And when I'm praising the Lord, I'm praising him for my neighbor. I'm praising him for the cashier. I'm praising him for my father. I'm praising him for my mother. I'm praising him for my husband, my children, but not just the people in my family. I'm praising him for my employer. I'm praising him for the person across the street who doesn't know him. Why? because they were made in his likeness. The Bible declares in Philippians 4 and 8, finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, this creation, there is virtue. If there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. We we have got to stop feeding our hearts and our minds with everything that drives us apart and begin as the church to remember that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Let us humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Let us humble ourselves and remember we are all just created in his image and my creation isn't better than her creation and her creation isn't better than his creation and his political agenda is not better than that political agenda because guess what? In the eyes of God, God's not standing for those political agendas. None of those political agendas are the things that matter. And even our protests for as great as they may be, those things are not what God wants us to fully and wholly strive for, though they may matter. But God wants you to remember first and foremost, we wouldn't have to do these protests if I remembered you were praiseworthy. We wouldn't have these uh, the, the separating political agendas if I remembered that you were praiseworthy. If I remembered that this person is praiseworthy, guess what? I would want great health care for that person. Person. If I remember that that person was praiseworthy, I'd want great education for that person. If I remembered uh, that this person was praiseworthy, I'd want to live civilly with that person. Not because I agree with everything they do, but because they are a created work of God. And it is marvelous and fearfully made. And I've got to respect the hand of God. That's right. I've got to respect the hand of God. That's why people don't value life anymore. That's why people are shooting people left and right because they don't value and put any emphasis on the praiseworthiness of the creation by the creator himself. My brothers and my sisters, we've got to be different. We've got to talk different. We've got to walk different. We can't do like we see the world doing. We've got to love even when they don't love us. God says uh, if, he, if they ask you to go a mile, go another mile. Why is that important? Because you believe that that person is praiseworthy, not because they they are right, but because they are a created work, I'm going to respect the created work. I don't have to agree with everything that you say. I don't have to agree with everything that you do. And hey, guess what? It doesn't mean that we've got to be friends, but I don't have to make you my enemy. You are a created work. Ephesians 2 and 10 tells us, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. That's right. You, my brother, you, my sister, were created in Christ Jesus for good works. 
And however God leads you to uh, explore those good works in your community, in your family, in your church, God wants you to remember. That's why you were created. You weren't created for that nine to five. You weren't just created to have babies. Those things are great and those are part of it. But make sure that we are remembering that we are his workmanship created unto Christ Jesus for good works. That's right. So the next time someone discourages you, the next time somebody uh, wants you to be pulled apart by all the, the whims of, of political agendas and social unrest, and, and then next time, remember, you are praiseworthy. Look in the mirror, my brother and my sister, and say, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. When we get it right in here, in our own hearts, then we can begin to look at our neighbor and say, I'll praise you for my neighbor because she's fearfully and wonderfully made. I'll praise you for my employer because he too is fearfully and wonderfully made. And if we begin to change the song of our hearts and remember that we are all created in his likeness, my brothers and my sisters, we can turn it around. We can turn it around. We don't have to wait for the polls on election day to turn it around. We can turn it around today. We can be the church. He's coming back like Pastor taught us last week. He is coming back. And he's not coming back and asking you if you're Republican or Democrat. He's not coming back asking you if you believe in abortion or not. He's coming back to ask, did you love your neighbor as I loved you? Did you love your neighbor as yourself? He wants to know, how did you treat the least of these? That's what he's coming back for. That's what he's looking at his church. He wants to know, did you look at them and see me? Because that person that you didn't like the other day, they were made in his image. More importantly, even so, so are you. So praise him. Give God praise. Give God thanks. Let's just take a moment right here to say, thank you, God. I thank you for creating me. Thank you for making me. Thank you for the workmanship that you have done, that you have created me in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, Lord God, lead and guide my steps that I can commence these good works in the earth, not by my own will, but by your will. Well, brothers and sisters, I pray that this has been a blessing to you as it has to me. I pray that you, the next time you look in the mirror, you say, I am praiseworthy. God bless you. Have a great day. If you want to receive Jesus today and say, what must I do to be saved? My friend, it's as simple as believing and confessing. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart, that Jesus died for your sins, was crucified on a cross and was buried. And he, the Bible says he was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead and ascended back to the right hand of God, the father, and is coming back for you. If you believe that in your heart, that he died for you like that, then you shall be saved. Child of God, confess this with me. Do you believe that? You have to say yes. Do you believe that, my friend? Pray this prayer with me then. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Come into my heart. Save me now. I pray this in your name. Amen and amen. Child of God, my friend, we are excited for you. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or something like that, I want you to write me. Write me at this email address, gopcc at generationofpraise.org. And I want to connect with you and follow up with you on some very important steps that you must take next. And I want to connect with you because I'm telling you, the Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice even when one person repents. And, and comes to the Lord for salvation. We're excited about your future. And thank God for you, church family. We're excited and we are on high alert. Well, listen, we are excited about our future together. Hold on in this time of, of pandemic. Listen, it will be over. It will be. The question is, will you be ready? You got to stay in, in a love relationship with the Lord Jesus. Thank God for each other. Thank God we can still connect in this way. And until we meet again at this same place, may God bless you 
and may God keep you, is my prayer.